people, I'm Ginny Metherill and I'm a fourth generation witch. We're going to look at some crystals today and I want to do my personal top three and how I use them because I think it's actually a really important part of witchcraft to indulge yourself in crystals and I, let's face it, indulge myself quite a lot with crystals but I wanted to tell you how and why and where I might use these three crystals which I consider to be an absolutely integral part of my path. So this is the crystals I use for spellcraft and magic. Before we get started, I just need to tell you about today's sponsor, Resin Crete. Today's sponsor is Resin Crete, an eco-friendly crafting solution. So what it is, it's basically a mould. It's a plaster of Paris type mould, but this is made from pure minerals. So it doesn't have any of the toxic, noxious fumes that you get with actual resin and is therefore safe to do with your children. It makes a wonderfully smooth finish so you can easily paint on it. So let me show you what's inside the package and how you do it. The package comes with literally everything that you need. You get the moulds. I got three moulds in varying styles. Uh, measuring cups, measuring spoon, pigments, the resin crete itself, a stirring stick and finally some sandpaper just to smooth off any little edges. You start by measuring your water. It's 30 grams of water per 100 grams of resin crete. Although I mixed it up wrong, first of all, so do read the instructions on the back. You do it by weight, and simply one scoop of resin's crete is about 30 grams or thereabouts, so I'm going to add three scoops and a little bit more just to bring it up to 100 grams. I added some pigment, a couple of squirts, in fact it came to two grams, into the water, and then I simply put it all together and mixed. When it was smoothly mixed, I poured it into these two moulds and 100 grams filled these two. But you, to be honest, you get plenty of resin mix in a pack and you can make lots and lots of these. So it's very good value. And then you simply wait. It really was as easy as that. And to unmould it, you just take it out. It's, I c it couldn't have been simpler. I was so impressed with the result and I didn't even need to sand off the edges. I got my incredibly talented daughter to decorate them for me and I think she's done a fabulous job with this beautiful silver pen and I will be using these on my altar. They're gorgeous. Thank you, my love. If you would like to try Resin Crete, and I really recommend this one, it was such fun to do, really simple, it's eco-friendly and perfect for all sorts of crafts, then the link is in my description box below. And as a special Ginny treat, there's a 5% off voucher there too. Have a look. Resin Crete by J Diction. It is recommended. So, what are my top crystals that I use? Well, of course, we all use different crystals and we're all drawn to different crystals. But the one that I'm drawn to possibly the most, and the one that I'm going to talk about the first, is the humble yet beautiful carnelian. Carnelians are bloodstones, they're sunset stones, they are full of protective fire and energy. The Egyptians believed that the carnelians would absorb the sun's magical energy and then impart that to the wearer. And in fact, ancient warriors would wear carnelians around their necks in order to absorb bravery, strength and courage, as well as protection from them. I love carnelians. I find their particular energy very vibing with mine. So it's quite vibrant, it's quite strong, it's quite dominant. Other cultures thought they were excellent healing stones. Now, I'm no healer. Let's just get that out there. I have plenty of people I know who are healers. I'm not one of them. It's because I'm too laissez fair, I think. You have to be very concise and dedicated and careful as a healer. And that is not me. I can help generally, but not particularly. Uh, but if I needed healing, I would use a carnelian stone. They're particularly associated with blood, and we did mention they're called the blood stone. That's because of their beautiful red colour. 
The way it works with carnelians is that they impart energy into the blood flow. So they increase your blood flow through their energy. And this will give you magical healing throughout all parts of your bodies. So they're sort of a master healer, if you like. Many, many years ago, I got my very first carnelian as a thank you present. And it was after I unwound some fairly intense dark magic that had been made several centuries ago and was having an ongoing impact into the area that this magic had been cast. And at the end of it, I was given a particular present, which is this carnelian here. And the guardians of the place that we did this curse breaking, essentially, gave me this carnelian. It is an absolutely beautiful one, and it is, in fact, the cornerstone of my Carnelians now. Now, you all may know that one of my main jobs as a witch is to deal with demonic entities. And these Carnelians are what protect me against them. So I would place them in a pentacle format. I stand in the middle of the pentacle and when I'm dealing with demonic entities, they are protecting me from the psychic attack that I'm likely to suffer whilst doing this work. They are a strong protective crystal. And then when I was doing my warding for this house, I think I've got them dotted around the wards as far as I remember. It's very difficult to remember. I'm, you know, I'm old and I can't remember what I used, but I'm pretty sure that carnelians were involved. So for me, the carnelian is one of my most prized stones. But should you ever be dealing with darker forces, please consider using carnelians to protect you against them. They have one last point which they're well known for, the noble art of feng shui. We'll use carnelians in the southeastern corner of your home in order to attract positive energy. My second stone is the clear quartz. Clear quartz is possibly the commonest gemstone in this world. I think you can walk outside the door and find a quartz lying around which will have clear quartz in it. However, Clear quartz is known as a master stone. So what this essentially means, if you are doing some spellcraft that calls for, say, tourmaline or hematite or aventurine or something along those lines and you don't have it, you can always substitute clear quartz. It is a master stone as well because it amplifies everything that you do. Now, those of you that know me well will know that I have this beautiful pendulum, which is a clear quartz pendulum, which I received many years ago. I use it almost hourly throughout the day. It's one of the first things I reach for in the morning and one of the last things I put down at night. I find it is an amplification of everything that I need it to be. Now, let's say, for example, that I wish to talk with a spirit. This clear quartz pendulum will amplify their voice so I can hear them better, will amplify that intuitive feeling that I'm trying to, you know, tap into, and so I can understand it. It is why they are used as crystal balls, and have actually been since history, time immemorial. There are some so famous crystal balls out there. The Empress Jiaoxia Shishi, I think, think she's pronounced. She's got this beautiful crystal ball held in the Penn Museum. There is John Dee's crystal ball, who was the magician associated with Elizabeth I's court. He was obviously a Christian witch, or a Protestant witch at least. He had various showstones. Our ancestral Celts would use a crystal quartz sphere as a healing stone. Because how it works is the crystal sphere amplifies positive healing energy through whoever the healer is. So, for example, I have said already that I'm a terrible healer, but if I use a quartz ball, I can direct my energy through the quartz crystal ball, which will amplify it and really make that healing successful.
They were sometimes known as knowledge keepers and you can see this um, in the crystal ball, the Druid's crystal ball, which is in the Scottish scepter, which is part of the Scottish crown jewels. Now, this beautiful Druid crystal ball was said to hold the knowledge of the Druids. They are used throughout every single culture. I think in the Pacific Ocean, they're particularly used as rain crystals to call in the rain. Now, what I like about a quartz crystal is that they have their own energy. They produce, and I don't know the physics of it, but you'll know this if you've got a quartz run watch. They produce everlasting energy, as far as I can see, which goes into your watch and makes it run. I have no idea how it works. I'm not a physicist. Let me know in the comments below if you are. But this energy can be harnessed, and this is what we're tapping into. Each crystal has its own type of energy, but the quartz is the clearest of them all and the most easily accessible. So how do I use crystal quartzes in my everyday? Obviously, I use it in a pendulum to help amplify everything from speaking with spirits to understanding my intuition to divination. So if I'm using tarot cards, I will use my crystal pendulum to help me understand what I'm looking at. I do think that crystal quartz, I know it's called the master stone, but I think it actually might well be because you can use it for everything. Protection, healing, amplification, divination, understanding anything. It's difficult, isn't it? Thinking about it, I don't know whether I would go for a clear quartz crystal, this particular one, or I would actually choose this carnelian. I don't think I can choose between them actually, especially this one. It's particularly strong carnelian. And finally, we come on to my last essential crystal, which is the wondrous rose quartz. For me, rose quartz is the most beautiful and the most calming. I love the fact that Cupid gave it to the human race. And the reason why he did is because the Greek goddess Artemis was trying to rescue her lover Adonis from Ares, the you know, god of war. As Artemis went to rescue him, she cut herself on a briar rose and the thorns of the briar rose drew her blood. So Adonis's blood and Artemis's blood mingled together and fell onto a clear quartz. And this stone therefore took on a pink hue and represents love. Keep them by your bedside to ensure that you're bringing attraction into your life. It's, it's a really good one for children as well because it's quite a calming stone. So I used to put it in my children's bedrooms in order to help bring them calm energy at night. It's you know, great for them to sleep with. If you use rose quartz, especially with rose petals or rose essence in your love spells, then you are going to really amplify that love spell and get the results that you're after. It does have the benefits of this emotional well-being and an emotional stability energy coming from it. And that is something that I very much need. I need a bit of emotional stability all the time. Otherwise, I'm off with the fairies. Quite literally. Anyway, emotional stability is a great gift that this stone has. Um, teenagers, when they are all over the place, if you gave them a bracelet of rose quartz or a rose quartz to wear, that will help soothe those boiling eruptions of emotion. And it's a wonderful, calming energy to keep with you at all times. I give a lot of rose quartz well to my family, but also to my friends, in order to ensure that our friendship is always attractive. I can't decide whether clear quartz or carnelians is my number one or number two, but my rose quartz is definitely number three, the essential gemstone to use in your spellcraft. I would love to hear what you use these crystals for and do you have any particular rituals that you like to involve with them? Because as I keep saying, we learn from each other and it's really important for me to learn from you as much as you learn from me.
Otherwise, please don't forget to go to Patreon because my cover meeting is coming up next week and you might like to join us. We will be doing, I don't know what, I haven't written it yet, but we'll be doing something fun. We always do. Come along and join us. Otherwise, please like and subscribe so I can make these videos for you every week. You know, because if I don't get enough subscribers, I have to go and do something else like, I don't know, become a cook again. <laughs> it's like going work in the local pub, which I no, I would hate. I would literally hate that. But, you know, we've all got to earn a living. So please like and subscribe and I will see you very soon next week. Bye.